Hi friends, this is Dave from javacodejunkie.com and welcome back to another JavaFX video tutorial. In this episode we're going to look at the slider control. So let's get right into it. Let's create a new JavaFX project. New other JavaFX project. Next, let's call it slider demo. Click next. And under the Libraries tab, this time I'm going to add the JavaFX library to the class path when we create the project as opposed to doing it after. Still the same effect. So choose User Library, click Next. Choose the JavaFX User Library, click Finish, and then click Finish. Let's open up the main.java file. Let's change the size to 700 by 400. Let's give our primary stage a title. We'll call it a slider demo. Now let's create a new slider. Slider, slider equals new slider. One of the constructors for the slider class allows us to specify a minimum, a maximum, and a current value for the slider. So what I'm going to do is create a slider that has values from 0 to 100, and I'm going to set the current value at 50. We'll organize our imports to import the slider class. I'm going to copy our fxutils class from our previous application. And now I'm going to create a horizontal box to which I'm going to add the slider and then add the slider to the center area of our border pane. So hbox, hbox1 equals fxutils dot create hbox and I'm going to specify the slider as at this point the one and only child that's going to be added to the hbox. We'll add the hbox to the center area of our border pane. We'll organize our imports to import the horizontal box class, and then let's just run and see what the default slider looks like. So it's not very pretty, but it is a slider. It has a minimum value, which we know is zero, a maximum value, which we know is 100, and a current value that we've set to be 50. But there are no visual cues as to the minimum, the maximum, and the current on the screen at this point. So let's continue to configure our slider. There's a method that allows us to show tick marks on the slider, as well as tick labels. So we're going to set those. So let's set the tick marks. We'll set that to true. Run. Still not much more useful than the previous. Now let's show the tick labels. Run it again. Now we have labels defaulting to 0, 25, 50, 75, and 100. So we now have a better idea of our minimum and our maximum, which are displayed. And our current value looks to be at the 50 mark. So that's good. Still kind of a small slider, so let's just change that up a bit. I'm going to set the preferred size for the slider. Preferred width, since this is a horizontal slider. Let's make it 500 and run that again and see what changes. So now it is looking better. We have the 0, 25, 50, 75, and 100, and we have some tick labels in between, although we don't know what those values are because we haven't specified. 
We don't have to stay with the 25, 50, 75, and 100 as our major tick units, and we're going to change those as well. So slider, set major tick unit. Let's set that to 10. And now we should see units of 10 all the way through the slider from 0 to 100. That's for the major. Let's set the minor tick count, which sets the number of tick marks between any two major tick labels. Let's set that to 9, I think, and see what that looks like. Looking somewhat better. Another thing that we can configure is the block increment. And that's the amount to adjust the slider if the track of the slider is clicked, or the amount to increase or decrease the slider value if you use the arrow keys. So let's set that at 1. We'll run. Let's manipulate the slider using the arrow keys. So let's use the right arrow key to add to the current value of the slider. And since we've set the block increment at 1, the right arrow key is going to add 1 to our current value every time we click on it. So 10 clicks to get us from 50 to 60. And if we were to go back the other way with the left arrow key, it will actually subtract our block increment from the current value. So again, 10 clicks to get back. And I'll show you that if we change that from 1 to 5 and run, now when we use the right arrow to add to the current value of the slider, it adds in increments of 5. And that's what we specify in the block increment. So only two clicks to get to 60 and 70 and 80 and so on. And again, two clicks to get between the major tick labels because we're adding or subtracting 5 every time we click one of those keys. So you can see if we use the mouse to slide up or down on the slider, it stays exactly where we put it, but we can set it to snap to the tick marks. So slider, set snap to ticks, true, run. And it's going to be hard at this point to see the snapping to the tick marks because we have a tick mark at every individual one increment value. So let's change that set our minor tick count at 3 and run. Now we should have less minor ticks in between. So if we were to take the thumb and position it between two tick marks and release the mouse button, the thumb should snap to the nearest tick mark. And there you see it does. Let's add a label to our user interface so that we can get a visual representation of the value of the slider when we move the slider thumb up or down. Label, label equals new label. I'm going to move the creation of our horizontal box down below the creation of the label, and then I'm just going to add the label. Organize our imports to add the label class run and now there should be a label just to the right of the slider although we can't see it unless we put something in it and there's our label not really a lot of space in between but it will do for the purposes of illustration now that we've added the label to our user interface let's create a change listener for the slider to update the label when the value changes. Slider.value property. And this is the same as we did in our last video on the change listener. Dot add change listener. It's a number. We'll add the appropriate classes, add the unimplemented method to our anonymous inner class, and then we'll set the value on the label to the current value of the slider. Label dot 
set text. What we want to do is to set the value of the label to the value of the slider. The slider value is a double. So let's say slider dot get value. And now we have to convert that value to a string. Double dot to string slider dot get value. Well, let's run. And now whenever we change the value of the slider, that should be reflected in our label. Now, again, not very pretty because the number isn't formatted and we're getting continuous values anywhere from 0 through 100 and they're not discrete integers. They are double values and they can take on any value from 0 to 100 inclusive. So let's change that to integer to string and then we will cast the double to an integer. Let's see what that looks like. All right, so now we only get discrete integers from 0 to 100. And one other thing that I'd like to show you is a little bit of styling in CSS so that we can make the slider look better. So we have an application.css file that was created for us by our EFX Clips plugin when we created this project. So let's open that up. And as always, I set the default value of the text to 14 so, so that it makes it a little easier to see. But I'm going to just paste in some entries for the slider. Now I got these from the modena.css file. And if you're not familiar with how to find that, you can look back to uh, JavaFX video tutorial number 18 in this series. Near the end of that video, it will show you where you can get a copy of that file. And I simply searched through that file to find occurrences of slider and picked a few of them just basically to change colors. I haven't done anything else. So let's run at this point and see what those color changes look like. So now we have at least a slider that we can see. It's visually more appealing. It has a black background. It has a gray track and it has an orange thumb. And that's just to show you some of what you can accomplish with a minimal amount of CSS to style your JavaFX controls. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing so that you don't miss any future content when I release new videos. I appreciate you hanging out with me today, and I hope to see you again in the next video. Until then, stay safe and keep on coding.